Hello everybody, this is Dan Grady and welcome to the Vector Sector. Now if you clicked on this video, you are either super nerdy and love video games like I do, or you thought I had the lowest resolution monitor in the world because it's so pixelated. But alas, it is supposed to be pixelated because today we are creating pixel art in Adobe Illustrator. Now when I was a kid, I played video games a lot, I still do, and the technology at the time, was, compared to today, was very limited. Um, game designers had to use certain amount of colors and very small file assets to be able to fit on the memory limitations they had. And they created some amazing things out of literally a small amount of squares, basically, or pixels. Now, on today's new video game consoles, we can create 3D models with lighting and textures and some amazing stuff looks super realistic but even with that tech um, game designers still make this old retro style for new games because it's charming and we all like it it's a nostalgic thing that we all love now um, there's a lot of different programs you can use to create pixel art um, some are dedicated just to making pixel art I think they're all pretty bad except for Adobe <laughs> <laughs> so, when I do pixel art, I either use Illustrator or Photoshop. Photoshop is a little faster, um, and I'll be making a video on how to do this in Photoshop as well. Um, but Illustrator is very good because it's vector, and that's a huge edge because you could rescale things at any time without losing quality. Now, to start here, I have a bitmap image, or an image I got off the web, of Link in his green tunic. Um, for demonstration purposes, we are going to be using this um, so you can learn the techniques. Now you could do a Google image search for Mario or Mega Man or Mushroom, whatever you want, um, just as long as it's pixels, pixel art. Okay, I'm going to put that, copy and paste that onto a layer and lock it. On the right here, I have the uh, Link in a blue tunic that I made in Illustrator based off of this pixel art. Um, and th they look, it's pretty neat because this looks like it's a bitmap image, but it's actually vector. Each square is, it's, it's vector. Okay, so I'm going to hide that for now. Slink. Okay, now to create this, we're going to be using a lonely tool in Adobe Illustrator that no one loves, and it often cries itself to sleep while your computer is asleep at night. Um, it's the rectangular grid tool. If I go up to my tools panel, let me zoom in on this here, you'll see some of the tools have white little triangles in the bottom right corner. That means that there are more tools that are of that same type under that tool that's shown. So for example, I have the line segment tool. If I back out a bit here, I'll click and hold, you will see the rectangular grid tool. Now like I said, I, I this is a weird tool. This and the polar grid tool, the arc tool, I don't know why they exist, really. Um, but I'm glad they do, because without the rectangular grid tool, I couldn't do this pixel art without it. It would be very time-consuming. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the rectangular grid tool. And I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to take a sip of the manliest soda in the world, Dr. Pepper 10. Because I'm losing my voice here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out and create a grid. And as you do that, you see I could drag out and create a different size grid. In my old video, what I did, um, I don't know if I mentioned, I did an old video on this before on YouTube, and it's very popular. Um, and since, and like I said, since it's old, since then I've learned a lot more tricks um, in doing this. And also I get the same questions asked me over and over, so I'm hoping that I can address some of those questions in this current video. Okay, in my old video I used to drag it off to the side and basically count the pixels and figure out where they were plotted and that was kind of time consuming even though you can do it, but I've learned a different method. Um, you could actually put it directly over as a template and uh, the problem that I had with, I knew at the beginning that that would be the best way to do it because then I'm just going tracing right over it, but I could never get the grid to line up to the pixels. Um, until I learned a little trick by myself on how to do this, and I haven't seen this anywhere else, so you are learning it here, and here
your loan and this will save you a ton of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command R, Control R if you're on PC to bring up the rulers. You can see me toggling them there. We're going to drag out from the rulers to create a guide on top of Link's head. Okay. One on the side, the bottom. Just you want to do pretty much like the whole perimeter of the character, the farthest edge. And then from there, what would we do is we go. I'm going to just going to go to the top left here. You can go to any corner, doesn't matter, and drag out. Okay. Now what you do is without letting go, you're going to hit the arrow keys. And as you can see, as I'm doing that. I'm decreasing my lines, or you can increase them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with none here, and I'm going to hit right to create vertical dividers. Okay, until it matches, right there. Now I'm going to hit up to create horizontal dividers until it matches right there. Okay, now let go. Okay, I'm going to hide that template layer. I'm going to toggle my guides off. Now I have the grid that matches that template perfect. That's going to save us so much time. Okay, I'm going to select that with the selection tool. And I am going to go to Object, Expand. To expand that grid. Now hit Shortcut K to bring up the live paint bucket. I don't know why it's a bucket. I, I always thought it should be like a paintbrush maybe. Um, and I'm going to click on that grid. Now it's a live paint group. And as you can see, as I move through this grid, there's a little red triangle that shows me where I'm about to plot some color. Okay. So I'm going to bring my guide back up. And what I'm going to do is simply trace over this, essentially, until you learn how to make your own um, you could do it from white canvas and just make your own thing. But for now, for demonstration's sake, we're going to go directly over this. So I'm going to hit I to bring up the little color sampler. Okay. Make sure you're not selecting that grid. So click off of it. It is now invisible. It's going to be kind of weird because it's almost like you're working invisibly. But it's the best way to do it. Trust me. Okay. I'm going to sample that black. And I'm going to paint in black. You can go down to the next line. Get black, 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 and then I sample the green, hit K again, do green. Okay. Sample this darker green. So basically you just keep your fingers on I and K. So I go I, K, I click K, I click K, I click K, and you're just gonna repeat this process. Now if I toggle the template off, you could see my vector art. Okay. Now we're going to keep going. And I'm definitely not going to do this whole thing because this, this takes a while. Um, especially if you have a more complex, which I believe this would probably, with how many colors there are, there will probably be a 16 bit image right here. Um, if you have an 8 bit image, it'll go way faster because there won't be so many squares to paint in. But this one would take a little while. Um, you just do it one at a time, just like this, and toggle your template off to see how you're doing. Okay. Keep doing that. I'm just going to fast forward here because I've already completed it earlier. Hence my blue link. Okay. I'm going to talk about a few extra things um, for this when we're done. When you complete it. Now, when you are done and you select your, your character, you will see you'll have the grid lines up. Um, and as long as the grid is set to a stroke of none, um, you won't see those that grid, which is a good thing. You don't want to see that grid behind it. Um, but your image might become pretty large because of that grid, and it might extend past, which, is, which isn't which is a good thing. You don't really need to, unless you need to decrease the size of the bounding box for your image, but you could actually get rid of um, some of these extra squares. A little trick I learned, if you it, like for example, I use a Wacom tablet, so I have a stylus. And when I flip it around, it'll automatically bring up the eraser tool, which is really cool. 
if you don't have stylus, you can, with that cool little switcheroo eraser thing, you can get the eraser from the tools panel. Basically, once you bring up your eraser tool, if you hold down Alt or Option, um, while dragging, you can marquee erase. Okay, see how what I'm doing there? And so you could actually erase extra segments you don't need. And I already went here and got that. But that is one tip I could give you guys I didn't include in my last video. Um, another way to get rid of all of those, I know because some of you have mentioned this before and said, why don't you do this, um, is if, I, if you go to Object, Expand. That will get rid of everything. And as you can see, it's tight. The grid is tight up to the character. Except for now, you may notice, there's tiny little, almost like hairline, I don't even know if you could see them on here, um, but they are there white lines between each square. At certain zoom levels it might not be noticeable but I have and, and people have told me if I save those out they won't be noticeable but sometimes they still are and so that is really not a desirable look right there to have those white little fractures almost. It's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of unique to Illustrator when you expand objects. It sometimes creates white little lines that really shouldn't be there because I have a stroke of none but somehow the software still reads it as information there and it expands it and creates that little hairline fracture. That's kind of a weird thing. Um, I'm using the newest uh, version of Illustrator here, CS6, and it still does it. So I think it's something that's going to be around forever. So I recommend not doing that. The other thing is uh, that I need to mention in this video is watch out for your whites. So even though there are whites in, say, his eye right here, Make sure you actually color them white and not just uh, a fill of none because when you bring up a background object, for example, if I had a background and it was red and it was placed behind this character, let me put it on that actual layer behind it, okay, it would show through the white. For example, if I set this white to none, you can see how it's not red. That would be really bad if your character was moving through the environment and it had uh, the background passing through the white spots. So make sure those are actually white. Okay. The other thing is that I hadn't, didn't mention in my old video was shading. Now with the limitations of old hard, um, hardware, uh, old video game consoles, they could only have a certain amount of colors. But with um, our new hardware, we could have millions of colors, even though it looks like it's retro style, we still have millions of colors in this, so I could actually create shade, so, so to speak. The best way to do that is, and this character already has some shading, so what I'll do for demonstration purposes is I will create a new grid. Okay. Following the same techniques I used before, expand it, convert it, and I'm going to paint. Now this is going to be really bad, I know, because I'm doing this just off the top of my head. But I'm just going to create a little face here. And hopefully this doesn't look super bad, which it probably will. Okay, that's the top of my grid, so actually I have no more information there. And that's okay. I'm going to take a skin color, fill that with skin. Okay, and I'll create his shoulders here, going down. This will be his t-shirt. There we go. Okay, let's put in his face here. Boop, boop, and a little mouth. Like, oh no, it kind of looks like a Lego man. Oh well. So... Shading will add a lot of dimension to your your uh, pixel art. So, for example, if I hit I and sample this skin right here in my swatches panel, and I have it selected. And I double click that. I'm going to bring up my swatch options. I'm going to zoom in on this because this is really good information here that I use all the time. So, it brings up my sw I'm going to my swatch options. I'm going to go to color mode and switch that to HSB, hue saturation black. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black slider and just nudge it down a bit. Okay? Now I hit K. And now I have a 
skin color that's a little darker that'll put on the side of the face there I'll do the same thing with red I'll click it down here and I'm going to this is just an example because you could use it also in this panel the same technique by just giving it a little bit more black and so I'm gonna hit B for black go down just a little bit and put in some shade under his neck there on the side you can sample this right again and I'm gonna put it up I'm gonna hit saturation and desaturate it a bit so now I have some lighting over here and I'm gonna do the same thing with the skin okay so saturation a little more light okay now you can see this starts to add some dimension because I actually have some lighting on my looks like a Lego man. <laughs> like I said, like I did that quick. I didn't know what I was making there, but um, so I believe that's everything. I, I think in the future I might make some videos on animating uh, pixel art in Photoshop or After Effects. But I think that's everything for now. So if you have any questions, shoot them my way, and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, thanks again for joining. And uh, I'd love to see your stuff. So if you send me some messages, I'd like to see some of the stuff you made. If you make an actual game, that'd be really cool. And just give me a shout out and say you learned this stuff here. Make sure you join my Facebook page, The Vector Sector, for even more cool tips and tricks. Until next time, see you later.